uh, I want to talk about writing. I've done some videos about pens that I've purchased and how much I love them. And I get the impression that some people are collecting pens or buying pens just to have them. Uh, just to have them on their desk or to have them on display. I, you, know, you can do what you want, obviously, but I got into pens because I was interested in my handwriting. That I no longer write with my left hand, I write with my right hand. And in that spirit, I got involved in the Spencerian practice books. And they are really good and they have really helped my handwriting. They've made a huge difference. So I highly recommend some kind of a program to improve your handwriting. I recommend appreciating your pens. I, just to give you an update, my Mondegrappa Aviator in its beautiful case is a pen I use every day and I love it. It has meant as much to me as I thought it would. Uh, my wife tells me, hey, don't put that in your shirt pocket because if you lose it, what are you going to do? And so I don't normally take it out with me on the street uh, to work or out of the house sometimes on special occasions, I mostly write with it in the house because it's not something that I would want to lose. It's not something I want to break or get dirty or, or show a lot of wear. Uh, I do, on the other hand, frequently use my Metropolitan, my Pilot Metropolitan. I love this pen and I keep it in my shirt pocket. I usually wear two pens with because I've learned that one will run out of ink. So I have the loom and the Metropolitan with me. And I have this prompt journal, uh, questions and answers for writers, 365 uh, by uh, Clarkson Potter. And it's a penguin book and it has uh, pages with questions like, Think of a scenario that you would find deeply uncomfortable. Write something about it as someone else. Uh, the questions are fantastic, thought-provoking. Uh, quitting, quitting often has a negative connotation. Flip that idea on its head and recall or imagine the sweet freedom that can come from a cut and run. Great question. A lot to think about, a lot to write. Gives me a reason to write. I really like that. Um, prompt journals. I, I have really loved prompt journals. Um, I, this is 300 more writing prompts. I already filled out, I, at Christmas time I bought 300 writing prompts. This is a Piccadilly journal. I love Piccadilly's journals. Um, they are a wonderful company. I bought the bigger one, 500 writing prompts. Uh, I've really liked, I've really enjoyed these. The paper's great for fountain pens, so it encourages you. I don't know, there's just something about paper that's designed for a fountain pen. It, the feedback just makes you focus on your writing and, and it makes you write better. It really does. Um, questions like, do you adapt easily to change or is it hard for you? Um, if you found out you had a brother or sister you'd never been told about, how would that make you feel? And would you want to meet them? You know, man, they're just thought-provoking good questions. And as people read these one day, they're going to learn a lot about you. Now, maybe no one will ever read these journals. I understand that. And if they don't, that's great because I'm not doing it specifically for someone to read one day. I'm writing these journals for myself, for the sake of writing them. Now, in this uh, day and age, you could... Um, you could keep your journal on a computer. You could do all your inter your correspondence through email on a computer. And if you know if that's what you feel, well, then you know get the hell out of here, because uh, this isn't for you. But I still obviously I send dozens, if not hundreds, of emails a month for work and for personal use, communication with people. And I did at one time keep a journal on a computer. I was doing it in WordPerfect. And, and now I'm trying to get those old files from 20 years ago transferred over to uh, Microsoft Word and, and reformatting the files and trying to straighten them all out. And it occurred to me that after I'm gone, 
who's going to dig through my computer files to look for my journal? They could all be lost. These journals will be in an orange crate somewhere in my house and uh, people will have to deal with them, look at them, decide what to do with them. It's more hands-on. They're going to have to deal with them. And in that vein, the journal journal that I've been keeping is a Piccadilly journal. I thought it was really cool when I bought it. I really like that it's wire bound and I can open it complete, completely like this and sit it flat on a desk. I like that about it. And, um, and I, I write a daily entry. Sometimes I may skip a day, but, um, but it, it's got all these affirmations on it. And that was, uh, might've been too much for me. Each page has, uh, inspiration, affirmation, or a scripture. Like this one says, there are no traffic jams along the extra mile. So I keep my journal here and, and this book, I mean, Piccadilly has different kinds of papers and different kinds of books. The paper in here is a little bit slick and it's a little bit hard to write on with a fountain pen. So um, I may get another one with a wire bound to take with me as I'm out traveling, sit in a cafe and write. A, a journal that I don't mind if it gets dirty on the cover or if it gets uh, worn out or whatever um, because I carry it with me. I did buy this one. Uh, I bought this one from Paper Blanks in a very nice stationery store. And it's a soft, leather-bound, beautiful, huh, just beautiful. Uh, just lines inside, nothing, just, just lines. And I look forward to, when I finish this uh, Piccadilly, I'm going to start filling out this one as my daily journal. And I was told that the paper's ideal for a fountain pen. And so I'm really looking forward to that. I also bought, as a daily carry, I bought this floppy journal with a, with a string that wraps around it. And uh, I thought that looked really, I don't know, thought it looked cool. But the problem is that, I, that it doesn't work out well for me. It has no lines. And because I'm struggling to uh, work on my handwriting, it, it makes it look worse because my handwriting's not developed to the point where I can just write on a blank page. So I kind of need the lines to guide me. And I, I'll st I like this, the idea of this floppy leather journal with a string around it. And I found other ones in Barnes and Noble and other places that have lines. And I'll probably get another one of those. Um, but I want to talk about what I write in my journals. A lot of people don't want to write because they, uh, They've got to sit and think about what they're going to say. And I have avoided that. I sit down and I write very concisely, very, very spontaneously. Um, I write what, what comes to my mind. And I, uh, somebody may read it one day and say, what the hell is he trying to say? Because I just write what pops into my head. And the inspiration that I take for doing this is... Um, Mark Twain's autobiography. My daughter gave me the first volume of his autobiography, and I'm just getting ready to buy the second. And he kept his autobiography, his journal, if I understand it right, in notebooks, sometimes on loose pieces of paper. He dictated to a secretary at some point. And so the entries, he talks about what's happening the day he sits down to write. And then he may talk of, tell a story about something that happened a year ago or five years ago or happened in his childhood. In other words, it's not written chronologically. He doesn't sit down and try to think, let me start at the very beginning and write my story. He just goes back and shares random stories. He gives, you know, when I was eight years old, uh, this happened. And I remember I was about eight years old and it happened in the summertime. And that's good enough in keeping your personal history, which we'll talk about right now. Um, I bought this book from Ecolo, who, a company that makes a lot of wonderful uh, journals. And they're, most of them are religiously themed, and I, I, that's why I picked this one. It's got, on every page, it's got a scripture, Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. And it's pretty good for the fountain pen. The pages are a little bit thin, and it's, there's been a tiny bit of bleed through. But what I've done in this book is... The story of my life. I randomly remember stories from my childhood and my youth, and they're not in really in chronological order. I'm just writing the story of my life. Again, I don't know if it'll ever be valuable to anybody, but if somebody ever cares, they can pick this up and read it. Oh, well, it won't last a five, 500 years. Mm, sorry. I don't, I don't know if anybody will care about the story of my life 500 years from now, but maybe this will corrode into dust. But still... 
I'm doing this for me because of the therapy of writing. As I, as I write about these things, I become aware of what's important to me. I write about things that I think are important and it makes me think about what's really important and, it, and my ideas seem to blossom as I write about them in my daily journal or, or in the story of my life. I write about the things that are important to me and I come away from each set, session as I sit down, whether I'm writing the prompt journals, answering their questions, or whether I'm writing in my daily journal or my personal history, and it, it makes me think about, oh wow, this is what's important to me. This is what I want to write about. This is what I want to share with my posterity, people who love me. So the final thing I did in, in finding reasons to use my pens and reasons to, to, to improve my handwriting and start writing with a pen and buying fountain pens is I bought some really nice stationery from Crane and Company. Um, and you know what? I've, I've liked it, it, writing these, these letters on this uh, stationery. It's beautiful paper and it responds well to fountain pens. That's why I bought this from a really nice stationery store. They told me it would work well with my fountain pens. And um, it's been a beautiful experience. I really focus on trying to make the writing look good and trying not to make mistakes and trying to make sure that, it, that things look good. And I mail the letters to people I love. I think of something I want to say to somebody I love. And people have received my letters and they contact me and they say, Dee, what the hell is this? And, uh, okay, so it's not typical of me. But, you know, I'm reinventing myself. And it's a good feeling, and it's good to, it feels good to write a letter. And you know what? If they don't like the letter when they receive it, they can fold it like a paper airplane and throw it across the fence and let the dog eat it. I don't care. But, or maybe they can keep it and appreciate it, but I still am going to do it. And I think I'm going to give uh, people uh, stationery as a gift, Christmas time and birthdays. I know my grandmother, who wrote beautiful letters, both of my grandmothers, had nice boxes of stationery on their writing tables or in their wherever they wrote their letters and would write people beautiful letters. It was a tradition. It used to be a beautiful tradition. Uh, my grandmother's sisters would keep letters that they received from family in, in a box, a shoebox that they would decorate. When my uh, Aunt Elda died, her children gave my dad a box of letters that my grandmother, his mother, had written to her sister so that he could have as a, as a keepsake and, re and read through the letters and get a peek into the mind of his mother. Beautiful thing. My mother has beautiful handwriting. She writes people letters instead of communicating by email. She just uses a piece of note paper. So I think I'm going to give her a box of this really nice stationery because she, she deserves to write her letters on some nice paper. So that's something that has inspired me and improved my handwriting and given me a reason to use my beautiful pens. So write your letters, buy pens, if you're, if you're collecting pens, and have them on display and appreciate them, but find a reason to use them. Keep your journal and write letters to other people uh, and improve your handwriting. Those are my tips, uh, and we'll see where this goes from here.